Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasna and today we will be discussing the arteries of the forearm or the arteries of the front of the forearm. So let's get started with the most main arteries in front of the forearm. These are the radial artery and the ulnar artery of course. So if you guys remember in the previous lectures we studied how the radial and ulnar arteries are basically the terminal branches of the brachial artery in the cubital fossa. The radial artery is the more superficial and the more smaller terminal branch of the brachial artery in the cubital fossa while ulnar is a more deeper and a larger branch of the brachial artery in the cubital fossa. Let's go ahead and talk about the radial artery. So what happens after it exits the cubital fossa? Well, the radial artery after exiting the cubital fossa, it runs downwards with a lateral convexity in the forearm where it is lying superficially in the upper part, it is overlapped by the brachioradialis and in the lower half, it is basically covered by the skin, superficial fascia and deep fascia. So it's quite superficial in its course. And finally, the radial artery leaves the front of the forearm by, by turning posteriorly and entering the anatomical snuff box. So basically from here, it goes behind and it enters the dorsum of the hand. It goes to the anatomical snuff box and the course ahead of this will be discussed in the hand portion. For the forearm, that's all you need to know about the course that it is beginning from the brachial artery running with the lateral convexity and its upper part is covered by the brachioradialis muscle while in the lower part it is quite superficial lying just beneath the deep fascia. And finally, it is leaving the exiting the forearm uh, by turning posteriorly entering the anatomical snuff box. So let's talk about the branches of the radial artery in the forearm. First branch is the one that it gives right at the beginning is the radial recurrent branch. Now this was the branch, radial recurrent branch that was basically taking part in the anastomosis around the elbow joint. It anastomosed with the anterior descending branch of the profunda brachii in front of the lateral epicondyle of the humerus. Then it gave muscular branches to supply which muscles? Obviously the lateral muscles of the forearm because it is a lateral artery or it is radial meaning lateral. Moving on, it also gives a palmar carpal and a dorsal carpal branch. Now these two are carpal branches, the palmar and dorsal carpal. Carpal meaning the wrist area. Dorsal and palmar uh, branches, these basically take part in forming the carpal arches. What are arches basically? arch is this that means there are arches that are forming here of blood vessels here and both here uh, so palmar and dorsal carpal same ulnar gives these two same uh, branches so that these anastomose with one another and they basically form the arch in front of the carpal area so this gives two palmar and a dorsal carpal branch and apart from this it gives a superficial palmar branch right be be before it turns posteriorly into the dorsum of the hand. This is the superficial palmar branch and this is responsible for completing the superficial palmar arch that the ulnar artery will make in the future that we'll talk about. So this was all about the course and branches origin and termination of the radial artery. Let's talk about the ulnar artery. So the ulnar artery begins from the cubital fossa. It is a more deeper branch. It passes deep to the heads, both heads of the pronator teres. And in the upper part, it runs obliquely downwards, after which the course is mostly vertical. It is running medially in your forearm, the most medial. However, there is one more thing that is more lying even more medial to the ulnar artery, and it is the ulnar nerve. Now, the ulnar artery and nerve, when they reach the wrist, the ulnar vessels and the nerve, they pass superficial to the flexor retinaculum. I hope you remember we studied this, that it passes superficial to the flexor retinaculum, but deep to the superficial slip of the flexor retinaculum, which is also known as the volar carpal ligament. And the ulnar artery enters the palm. So this was the course of the forearm part of the ulnar artery. What are the branches it gives? Well, ulnar artery is responsible for the main blood supply of the forearm. Uh, ulnar artery basically gives muscular branches to obviously the medial muscles of the forearm. It gives the anterior and posterior ulnar recurrent branches. Anterior and posterior ulnar recurrent branches that took part, if you remember, in the 
anastomosis of the elbow joint and then it gives most important large branch called the common interosseous artery the common interosseous artery is going to give the main blood supply to your forearm and apart from this the ulnar artery is also giving the palmar and dorsal carpal branches as we as i mentioned earlier so the common interosseous artery basically if the radius and ulna bones between them lies the interosseous membrane so if let's suppose this is the interosseous membrane this is the uh, interosseous membrane this is the pronator quadratus that was lying uh, in front of the lower part of the interosseous membrane so if this is the, considered as the interosseous membrane the common interosseous branch basically arises in front of the interosseous membrane the common interosseous at this point gives the anterior and posterior interosseous branches the anterior runs in front of the interosseous membrane along with the anterior interosseous nerve while the posterior interosseous passes through a gap in the interosseous membrane in the upper part to go and enter the posterior part of the forearm so posteriorly gone the posterior interosseous artery so we do not need to study about this in the artery arteries of the front of the forearm let's but we have to talk about the anterior interosseous artery the anterior interosseous artery runs vertically along the interosseous membrane and just at the upper border of the pronator quadratus it pierces the interosseous membrane in the lower part and it enters posteriorly in the posterior part or in the dorsum of the hand so that is how the anterior interosseous leaves the front of the forearm so uh, let's uh, brainstorm again first we had the common interosseous branch this gave anterior and a posterior interosseous branch the posterior interosseous branch pierced the interosseous membrane in the upper part and went to the back of the forearm while the anterior interosseous came down and traveled along the interosseous membrane to finally pierce it in the lower part and leave to enter behind the anterior interosseous artery is basically giving a number of branches which are very important the most important are the nutrient arteries that it is giving to the ulna and radius the muscular branches it gives to the deep muscles of the forearm namely the flexor digitorum profundus pollicis longus and pronator quadratus and finally it is giving median artery to accompany the median nerve so there are about three branches arising from anterior interosseous so this was all about the main arteries of the front of the forearm join me in the next video where i talk about the arteries of the hand and the superficial and deep palmar arches